जय सीताराम बालकांड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी सिक्स In the previous section, we learnt that Rama agrees to confront Tataka because he gives so much importance to his father's words, and it was his father's desire that Rama fulfil every wish of Vishwamitra, and it is Vishwamitra's wish that Rama confront Tataka. Therefore, he agrees to confront Tataka. and rama twangs his mighty bow and the sound reverberates across the multiple directions of the forest the birds and beasts are frightened and they run away and this sound infuriates tataka she rushes towards rama and lakshmana and she is extremely terrible to behold and Rama remarks that frightening aspect of Tataka to Lakshmana and Vishwamitra stays Tataka's arrival by saying hum then Tataka through the powers of her illusion begins to shower rocks and stones upon Rama and Lakshmana now we are going to see how Rama responds to Tataka's menace verse 17 shila varsham mahatasya shara varshena raghava prativaryo apadhavantya karau chidhed patrbi scattering the rocks by a flight of arrows rama cut off her hands as she sprang at him So the first thing he destroys of Tataka is her hands. And previously he had remarked to Lakshmana that because she is a woman all he wants to do is just chop off her ears and nose and impede her power. But now he is seeing that she is very harmful in her intentions and therefore he chops off her hands. Verse 18 तत छिन्न भुजा श्राता अभ्याशे परिगर्जती सौमित्री अकोत् क्रोधा हृतकर्णाग्र नासिका yet she stayed not but roared frightfully albeit tired and without her hands when lakshmana operated on her and chopped off her ears and nose Now Lakshmana understanding Rama's intent chops off Tataka's ears and nose and it's a very common theme with Lakshmana so it seems because he chops off Shurpnaka's ears and nose as well and Saumitri means the son of Sumitra so technically both Lakshmana and Shatrughna have the same appellation but based on the context we know that valmiki is referring to lakshmana over here and we should also know karnagra nasika karna means ears and nasika means the tip of the nose verse 19 kam roop dhara sa tu kritva roopani anek kasha अंतर्धानम गता यक्षी मोहयंति स्व मायय अश्म वर्षम विमुंचंति भैरवम विचचार सा the next moment she assumed a thousand shapes and was here and there and everywhere then all at once she vanished from view leaving them bewildered by her illusion verse 20 तत तौ अश्म वर्षेन कीर्यम सामत दृष्ट गादिसुत श्रीमाद वचनम अब्रवीत यट अ सीजल डाउन पोर् ऑफ रॉक्स इंडिकेटर हर एक्टिविटी एंड मेड हर टेरेबल प्रेसेंस फेल्ट एट विच विश्वमित्र ग्रू इंपेश एंड एक्सक्लेम टू राम गाधि इज Sage Vishwamitra's father's name, and that's why Gadi Sutta means Sage Vishwamitra. Verse twenty-one: 
अलम ते घृणया राम पाप एष दुष्टचारिणी यज्ञ विघ्नकारी यक्षी पुरा वर्धेत माय a truce to your misplaced tenderness o rama are you not yet convinced that she is a she devil who has destroyed the sacrifices of many an unoffending sage verse 22 vadhyatam tavat eva esha pura sandhya pravartate rakshansi sandhya kaleshu durdarshani bhavanti vai Twilight is drawing a pace and then these foul things of darkness are most powerful nay almost invincible see how her energy increases as the day wanes and the night draws near slay her outright and delay not so now vishamitra gives the direct command vadhyatam esha she must be destroyed she must be killed and he says during night because these are all nishacharas that means that they are nocturnal creatures and therefore when the day draws to an end they become very powerful and he says o rama vadhyatam tavatesha you are supposed to kill her and it should happen before twilight most obviously rama is more powerful than any powerful rakshasa and we will see in yuddha kanda that the war between the army of ravana and the army of rama took place even during night time it did not stop at sunset but it continued day and night day and night it just was a non stop battle and obviously rama's side was a victorious one but still nonetheless sage vishamitra is saying you have to kill her before twilight verse 23 iti ukta satu tam yakshim ashma vrishtya abhivarshanim darshayan shabd veditvam tam rurodh sa sayakai When Vishwamitra addressed him thus Rama displayed his capacity in sonic archery though she was strong in her powers of illusion and she remained invisible Rama's arrow sought her out even there and stayed her rocky downpour verse 24 सरुद्धबाण जाल मया बल समन्वित अभिदुद्राव काकुत्स्थ लक्ष्मण च विनेशुधि then in sheer despair did she rush at the princess with terrible roars of baffled rage for the arrays of arrows had obstructed her illusion powers verse 25 वेगेन अशनीम इव शरेन उरसे विव्याध पपात ममारच द बॉय हिरो शॉट एट हर अ फायरी एरो fierce as a thunderbolt एंड ऑलमोस्ट इरेजिस्टेबल इट स्ट्रक हर फुल ऑन द चेस्ट down she fell and gave up her wretched life so this is a rather fierce battle and tataka was already deprived of her two hands her ears and the tip of her nose and now with a single arrow squarely on her chest she loses her life as well verse 26 
उवाच परम प्रीत सहस्राक्ष पुरंदर सुराच सर्वे समृष्ट विश्वामित्र अथ अब्रुवान then the exceedingly pleased thousand eyed purandara or indra and all the other delighted celestials said to vishwamitra verse 28 mune kaushik bhadram te sah indra sarve marut gana toshita karmana anena sneham darshaya raghave O holy one all hail to you you have laid every one of us under a deep obligation the devas are gratified by this act of rama and have expressed their love for the lord verse 29 prajapate krishishvasya putran satya parakraman तपो बल भृतो ब्रह्मण राघवाय निवेदय गिव येट अनदर प्रूफ ऑफ योर ग्रेट लव टू रामा बाय इंपॉर्टिंग अनटू हिम द साइंस ऑफ द डिवाइन वेपन्स द सन्स ऑफ द प्रजापति कृशिश्वर दे आर ऑफ अनफेलिंग माइट एंड ब्रॉट इनटू एक्जिस्टेंस बाय लॉन्ग एंड टेरिबल तपस वर्स 30 पात्र भूत चते ब्रह्मन तव अनुगमने रतः कर्तव्यम सुमहत कर्म सुरानाम राज सुनना यू कैन नॉट फाइंड फॉर देम अ फिट रेसिपिएंट देन रामा सो डिवोटेड इज ही टू योर सर्विस एंड सो नेसेसरी इट इज टुवर्ड्स अकॉम्प्लिशिंग अ ग्रेट एंड वी हैव इन व्यू सो डिले नो मोर so said the gods to vishwamitra verse 31 evam uktva sura sarve jagmur khrist vehayasam vishwamitram poojayantatah sandhya pravartate they ended and with loving salutations to the holy one and hearty blessings on the boy heroes departed to their respective abodes Meanwhile the shades of night were falling fast verse 32 tad muni vara prita tataka vadha toshita murdni ramam upagrahya idam vachanam abravit then vishamitra well pleased with rama smelt him lovingly on the head and said verse 33 इह अद्य रजनी राम वसाम शुभ दर्शन श्व प्रभाते गमिष्याम तद आश्रम पदम मम रेस्ट वी ह्योर फॉर द नाइट एंड रीच माई हर्मिटेज टू मोरो ओ डियर राम वर्स थर्टी फोर विश्वामित्र वच श्रुव खृष्टो दशरथात्मज उवास रजनी तत्र ताटकाय वने सुखम सो दे पास द नाइट इन द वंस ड्रेडेड हॉन्स ऑफ ताटक वर्स 35 मुक्त शापम वनम तच्च तस्मिन एव तत आहनी रमणीयम विबभ्राज यथा चैत्र रतम वनम Now that land was freed from its unhappy curse and once again was a smiling and happy land beautiful even as chaitra ratha verse 36 nihatya tam yaksha sutam saramah prashasya manah sura siddh sanghai uvas tasmin muni nasah eva prabhat velam प्रतिबोध्यमान राम हैविंग दस रिद द अर्थ ऑफ द टेरेबल डॉटर ऑफ यक्ष गॉड्स एंड सेजस वाइड विद वन एन अदर इन सिंगिंग हिज प्रेजस अ डीप स्लीप एंड स्वीट डिसेंडेड अपॉन द आईज ऑफ राम एंड ही ले लॉक्ड इन द सॉफ्ट आर्म्स ऑफ स्लम्बर टिल ही वॉज राउज एट अर्ली डॉन बाय द होली सेज So this is the conclusion of how Tataka is killed
and now we are seeing that rama spends the third night in the forests of tataka so the first night was spent on the banks of river sarayu the second night was spent in the kamashrama with the disciples of lord shiva and the third night was spent in the forests of tataka which was now very beautiful because rama slayed tataka one very important thing to note is that in a couple of verses ago we saw how indra and the other celestials request vishamitra to bestow upon rama the thousand sons of krishishva who are very valiant and very powerful weapons and indra and the others say that this is something that rama should have because there is no one who is a fitter recipient than he as well as he is meant to perform a very important task for the devas and therefore it is imperative that he is equipped with every possible advantage and of course rama is not dependent on any particular weapon he is more than capable of destroying anybody through just his ichcha shakti but these weapons are the sons of prajapati krishishva and they are very prominent imminent bhaktas and we will see their sharanagati in the next chapter So Vishwamitra had these beautiful weapons in his position and he gives every single thing to Lord Rama and this forms simultaneously as a shelter of Vishwamitra as well as a shelter of these beautiful arrows and we will look at them in great detail in the next chapter Mangalam Koshalendraya Mahaniya Gunapthiye Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarvabhaumaya Mangalam Jai Sita Ram